Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for uh, having me here. So, um, excuse me while I read from this because uh, I'll try to keep this within the, the time limit. You're right, I do have a habit of going off on tangents, so I'll, I'll read from the script to make sure I stick, stick on time. So, um, my doctoral research investigates the continued influence that previous participation within the British anarcho-punk scene has had on the subsequent lives of a number of those participants. So my ongoing PhD currently consists of four main chapters which attempt to map the anarcho-punk experience and anarcho-punk identity through the narrated memories of its participants. The thrust of my investigation centres on notions of identity, memory and nostalgia. So whilst not being a life course study, my PhD looks to illuminate the relationship between one's past participation within a specific punk subculture and scene, and their present perceptions of that moment in time, and how much of what is termed by Ibao as residual identity still influences or impacts on their current identities. So where lots of research has been conducted on members of subcultural and post-subcultural -sub -sub -post groups, including ageing within these groups, there has been limited amount of studies, especially in punk rock, of people who are no longer members of such groups. So what happens to these people when they leave a subcultural or post-subcultural group? What continuing influence has or does that have on their subsequent lives? So for the purpose of this presentation, I want to focus on the exit narratives of anarcho-punks. So this is a chapter that I'm currently starting to pull together uh, from my primary interview material. So to enable this, I'll draw on a few examples from my interviews that form part of my research to illuminate some of the issues at play here. Adapting the Ebal's framework of role exit and drawing on Gordon's typology of member exit practices in UK DIY punk uh, culture, I present a discursive analysis of a number of interviews with past members of regional and narco punk scenes in the UK. The particular narratives I present today serve as explanatory devices for, such, um, for each participant's exit from a narco punk and a narco punk subculture. So, in doing so, I aim to address the omission in punk lit literature as to why people exit punk scenes or exit the punk subculture. In earlier chapters of my PhD research, I argue for the importance of subcultural and scene belonging and engagement as being central to the construction of one's subcultural identity, especially when that engagement takes place during adolescence. Muse et al. suggests that adolescence is an important time for identity construction, and the identity we construct during our adolescence tends to have the most influential and lasting impact on our subsequent identities. As we move through life, we construct multiple identities often based around roles that we adopt and roles that we disengage from, or as Ibao suggests, roles and identities that we exit from. So Ibao suggests that role exit is the process of disengagement from a role that is central to one's self-identity and the re-establishment of an identity in a new role that takes into account one's ex-role. What's pertinent to my doctoral research is her focus on identity and how that is constructed through the engagement with and disengagement from roles and role identity, and this notion of residual identity that not only informs a new identity and role, but a residual identity that remains and informs our subsequent identities that follow. In her seminal work on role exit, she suggests there is a sequential process that takes place leading to the exiting of one's current role and role identity. From this, Ibao develops a typology to enable researchers and practitioners to consider, map and analyse role exit. In brief, she suggests that the sequential process takes on four stages. First doubt is when a person begins to doubt their role commitments. This can be impacted on by a number of events, including changes within the groups they are involved in, and role burnout is often cited as a common first doubt principle. This is followed by seeking alternatives. So when the person starts to look for an alternative to the current role commitments, a sense of emotional relief that alternatives are possible and the person is imagining themselves in a new role. The turning point. This can be a major or insignificant event, but symbolic in terms of role relevance that focuses awareness that the old roles are no longer desirable. And then the final stage is creating the X role. This is the presentation of a new identity. Some Xs maintain some identification with the prior role, whereas others shake off their role identity after they have exited. In all instances, dealing with role or residual identity residual is a challenge for these people. So whilst their work focuses on, on exes such as ex-nuns, ex-alcoholics, ex-prostitutes, transsexuals, divorcees, and many other social and cultural categories, her typology draws some useful ideas as to one, how one might investigate reasons for exiting subcultures or scenes, so moving from one identity perhaps to another. Uh, closer to my research, subject of anarcho-punk, fellow punk scholar Alistair Gordon 
has investigated exit practices of those involved in the DIY, DIY punk scenes in Bradford and Leeds. His ethnographic research around scene exit practices, where exit is interpreted as the opposite of authentic involvement in a scene, also brings forward a typology based around four common themes of scene exit. So there's the vanishing people. This is where marginal participants of a scene, these seen at gigs, and are, are engaged with at a superficial, superficial level, arrive and subsequently disappear in the ebb and flow of scene participation. Careers in education, or the adoption of a career that compromises scene involvement, so this is seen as a, a, a sort of selling out principles, uh, selling out your DIY principles, and education where inauthentic peripheral or semi-peripheral members in higher education use their student status to masquerade as core members of a particular scene. Age, children and death, so where age is seen as a limiting factor for scene engagement, both, both subculturally and physically. Children is, is seen as a shift in responsibilities, though Gordon notes that particular reasons more commonly created a hiatus from a scene rather than a full exit, and death where Gordon notes as being the ultimate form of scene exit. And then there's uh, scene issues. So this is, um, as with Ebel's identification of burnout, as a first out, here burnout was cited as being the most common outcome leading to scene exit in the DIY punk scenes in, in uh, Bradford and Leeds. And this comes about generally from a lack of rewards from one's input into that particular scene. So exit is seen as a space to reassess and take stock of one's activities before perhaps returning at a later date. Selling out DIY scene principles and values and a demonstration of a lack of authenticity. So whilst their, uh, Ebao and Gordon's work have different starting points, there are a number of perceived commonalities for individual reasons or motivations for exiting the role and subsequent identities. identities. So in the slides that follow, I want to pick up on a number of their typologies through a number of excerpts from interviews with my research participants. I'll give you a moment or two just to read some of those texts there. So as noted by both Ibao and Gordon, burnout was often cited as a common reason for ind individuals to reassess their engagement with and their commitment to a subculture or scene. As the first quote suggests, the effort involved in levels of commitment, sometimes with little recognition for those efforts, starts to create a sense of doubt as to the worthwhileness of those efforts in maintaining and developing the subculture and scene and one's identity. In the second quote, J.A.'s experience of working in a vegan vegetarian co-op also made her question her own and other sense of commitment to some of the values incumbent in the anarcho-punk subculture and scene. The notion of community and its importance to anarcho-punk subculture featured heavily in my respondents' discourses and were mostly positive. I discussed the positive aspects of community in other parts of my research in terms of support systems, sense of common purpose, sense of shared values, shared spaces. A number of my respondents felt a sense of first doubt through a loss of community. However, as the next quote suggests, as time passed, for some, this sense of community fractured. For BD, in the final quote, this was something he felt was integral to the anarcho-punk subculture and scene, and his anarcho-punk identity. But he started to doubt whether there was, this was the case for others. Losing a sense of community has also been noted in the work of Debbie's Carl, who notes, sometimes participants who no longer affiliate with punk identity attribute their departure from the scene or subculture, in part to the scene losing that sense of community. My wider research shows that for many of my respondents, their attraction and entrance into anarcho-punk was because of the notion that anarcho-punk offered and embraced a number of politically focused sets of values and ideologies that re resonated with my respondents' punk identity, beyond the empty anarchy and DIY rhetoric of earlier punk. However, this later, however, later this raised a number of first doubts about exiting anarcho-punk for many of my respondents. For many, there was a sense that anarcho-punk was developing into quite a hard line of partisan movement, where expressions of personal freedoms, views and values became problematic and paradoxical, where the very things that attracted them to anarcho-punk contributed to their anarcho-punk identity and expression of it. Another of the common discourses that created notions of first out for my respondents was a change in musical style within anarcho-punk. This is ably demonstrated in this set of quotes.
These also centre around the disbanding of seminal anarcho-punk band Crass in 1984. However, as you can see from the last two quotes, there was already a move to seeking alternatives, Ebal's next step towards role and subsequent identity exit. Not only was this expressed through seeking alternative forms of music, but also alternative lifestyles, subcultural groups and political affiliations. For some of my respondents, their involvement with the narco-punk had brought them into contact with groups of New Age travellers, initially through the free festival scene, and a number of connections some of those narco-punk bands had with the free festival scene. A narco-punk's relationship with the early anarchic counterculture and free festival scene has been documented elsewhere, including in Crass founder member Petty Rambo's autobiography, where he discusses his connection to the Windsor Free Festival and the Stonehenge festivals. The New Age tra traveller subculture and lifestyle offered a sense of personal freedom where the anarchic principle of being outside of the system could be realised, while still maintaining a sense of community and some common purposes. So, whilst JM had been presented the possibility of an alternative to her current identity and lifestyle, and a means of exiting by socialising with the traveller community, she also suggested the responsibility of having a child whilst living what she considered to be a precarious lifestyle focused that motivation to seek an alternative. As Gordon notes in his investigation of DIY scene exit, although having children had some impact on scene commitment and involvement, this was not always perceived as being a permanent uh, exit but more of a hiatus. Similarly, in his investigation of the goth scene, Paul Hodgkinson suggests that goth parents had maintained their connectivity and commitment to the goth scene, though in a somewhat toned down way, and would also accommodate the responsibilities of being a parent. However, for many of the people in those particular studies, the issue of the precarity associated with squatting did not feature. So where anarcho-punk had been focused on a number of political and ideological issues, CT's narrative about his developing involvement with Class War, a direct action class-based anarchist group, provided him with an opportunity to reassess his political views and connection to anarcho-punk, and similarly his anarcho-identity. So both JA's and CT's narratives here allude to moving to the next step towards role identity and exit that Ebal calls the turning point. So Ebal argues that one of the reasons leading to a turning point is often brought on by a specific event. These events might be significant in their own right or insignificant, but take on symbolic meaning in the context of the decision-making process to exit. For SF, the realisation that the authorities had been and were watching him and demonstrated that in a specific way suggested that this event was particularly significant enough for him to reconsider his involvement with anarcho-punk and the activities associated with his, with his involvement in anarcho-punk. In this particular case, this did not lead to full exit from his anarcho-identity, as he alludes to a strategy to continue his ideological and political practices, but in a more clandestine way. Further conversations with him reveal that he, that he eschewed the visual identifiers of anarcho-punk and shifted his outward anarcho-punk act activities, such as attending gigs, to enable him to, to what he referred to as vanish from the observations of the authorities to continue his ideological and political practices. So the eschewing of the visual signifiers of an anarcho-punk identity also feature in the final narrative from CT. His narrative demonstrates the point at which he created the X role by shunning the visual identifiers that for him constituted part of his anarcho-punk identity. His initial unease with his actions is an emotional response that Ibao highlights in her work, where she says that the self-acceptance and acceptance of those around you are problematic in the early stages of settling into new role and new identity. This is further impacted on by the sense of a residual identity from the role and identity one is exiting from. For CT, this is further reinforced by the fact that for him, the seriousness of the activities of his new role and new identity were tied up in his outward appearance. So, whilst few studies have focused on the departure of participants from existing punk subcultures and subcultures more generally, British anarcho-punk seems to have, as noted by Liptrop, and in some of my participants' narratives, fragmented and been subsumed into a number of developing subsets of punk, such as DB and cross punk. This fragmentation presented a number of my respondents with the opportunity to reassess their involvement and commitment to anarcho-punk, 
and provided an extra exit strategy for them. Where I expected to hear narratives of getting older and taking on adult respon responsibilities such as work and families as a reason for exiting, I was surprised to find that these reasons featured very little in my interviews. Although there was a process of exit taking place for my research participants, my larger study shows that uh, shows so far that my participants have in some ways remained connected to anarcho-punk through their memories, but also through a number of continuing cultural and political practices that reflect the values and ideologies that they acquired from being involved in anarcho-punk in the 70s and 80s. Here the notion of the lasting impact of adolescence identity formation, highlighted by Muse et al, and residual identity as highlighted by Ebel, is writ large. Whilst this is by no means a comprehensive study, I have only had the opportunity to present a few of my participants' narratives. There is an indication towards a number of commonalities as to their reasons for exiting the anarcho-punk subculture and scene, and subsequently their anarcho-punk identity. This is for me an early intervention into the concept of subculture and scene exit, which is seemingly an under-researched area of subcultural and post-subcultural studies. Although there has been some excellent work done on individuals exiting street gangs, uh, which I'm yet to explore. Any comments, suggestions at this stage will be gratefully, gratefully received. Thank you. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.